All right, let me cook. What if I told you there was a vein build that could potentially get rid of all of her weaknesses? A vein with a strong, meaningful early game, nearly class-leading self-peel, and the ability to threaten destroying entire enemy bases if left untouched. This untapped power is what you can access with the power of this forbidden lethality tumble vein build. So how does this shit work? Honestly, I don't really think it's supposed to. Vayne's a champion that hasn't really been in the meta for years at this point. She takes about 30 metric decades to scale into late games, so she automatically loses the game half the time in laning phase. Her team fighting capability is power creed by champions that have better mobility, more AoE, and better itemization than her. In today's meta, she probably qualifies for public welfare with the amount of champions that give her no rights. This build negates all of that by basically going all in on the one ability that many people probably have ignored for as long as they have been playing the champion, her tumble. Tumble's never been really seen as an ability that has had a significant impact on her kit, as viable vein builds have pretty much always been centered around on hit and leverage of so over bolts, which is generally the bread and butter to a lot of her successful games. However, if we take a look into her recent patch changes, not too long ago, Vayne received a nice juicy buff to her tumble, increasing its AD scaling to be 50% stronger, as well as reducing its duration to 3 seconds, increasing her overall mobility even out of combat. This build takes advantage of this buff to its absolute limit, creating a monstrous damage chunking version of Vayne that frankly feels unnatural and shouldn't be allowed to deal this amount of damage. The reason for it working so well is also a little uncanny, a happy coincidence if you will. As Tumble is both an auto attack modifier and a dash, it can build multiple damage boosters that should not be allowed to work together. With this, your first two items in the build are going to be Essence Reaver, the AD focused Sheen auto attack modifier, and Prowler's Claw, which also boosts your auto attacks but because of its own passive being able to increase damage off of dashes. The rhythm that results is basically a vein that actually builds no attack speed at all, but makes use of consistent auto attack cancelling to weave in her heavy hitting auto attacks with insane potent tumble enhanced ones. I'll touch on the rest of the build in a bit, but this is pretty much the premise and function behind it. When the build really gets a shine is with her ultimate, which puts her in a state where she's simply just really hard to counter. This is because it cuts her tumble's cooldown in half, but also gives Vayne a stealth for one second when she does use it. Right now at rank 5, tumble already only has a 2 second cooldown, so you cut that in half, it's only at 1 second, meaning that her windows where the enemy can actually see her are super tight. Consider the fact that this Vayne build often gets you upwards of AD ability haste in the mid game, and you're going to go in team fights where you're basically going to be invisible the whole time. Imagine just constantly dashing, coming in and out of stealth, and being the most annoying champion possible. Because of the insane mobility, this even introduces the potential viability of Vayne top in certain matchups, since you have enough dashes to maneuver around and make some high mobility matchups like into Camille or Aurelia more viable. Let's quickly touch on an easier topic with the tumble Vayne build, runes. Normally, Vayne goes for a modest approach with keystones like lethal tempo or press the attack, really standard AD carry stuff. However, with this build, you're not going to make good use of the consistent DPS that the precision tree would normally net you. So instead, we're going to have some fun with it and go the domination route. Hail of Blades would be the rune of choice to actually give you some early game agency and pump up your attack speed for very bursty situations. You'll be building full AD anyways, so Hob is actually pretty efficient as you spike into mid game. After your keystone, you can get Taste of Blood or Sudden Impact depending on if you need that sustain in the early game. 9 times out of 10, I'd say it's more beneficial to have Taste of Blood, but in the times where you don't need it, the extra lethality offered from Sudden Impact is basically going to be permanently enabled with this build, and you're going to really feel the extra oomph offered. For the third row, go either Eyeball Collection or Zombie Ward, depending on how volatile you'll think the game will be, and for the last three, go either Treasure Hunter or Ultimate Hunter, depending on your playstyle. I generally go Ultimate Hunter because of how nerfed Treasure Hunter is overall, and since Tumble Vein succeeds best when under the conditions of her ultimate, having it up more often can only be greatly beneficial to the playstyle. For secondary runes, I usually end up going the Inspiration Tree, as it just provides the most consistent value every game. Taking Boots and Biscuits really solidifies the consistency of the build. Other runes like Precision are in fact decent, but slot for slot in my eyes don't round out the build quite like the Inspiration Tree does here. For your adaptive stats, I would still recommend going the standard Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Armor combo. Fundamentally speaking, there isn't much that changes when it comes to the ability usage of this build. It's more so about the difference of your strengths and how they're allocated. You're going to be doing a lot less consistent autoing and kiting, and much more tumbling, as the build applies. The main thing I'd recommend getting used to is just the idea of this, and getting used to really weaving your auto attacks with tumbles. This also means that your trade patterns aren't high committal at all if they don't want to be. As you get points into your Q, which you're supposed to max in this build by the way, your trade patterns can be as simple as tumbling forward while the enemy goes to CS, squeezing in that one really fat auto, and then backing right up to resume your usual duty. The other main change will be when you're using your ult, because your priorities when ulting are going to be slightly different. Since you're basically going to be tumbling for every auto attack, it'll be a much higher priority than normal. You have a lot of leverage for dodging abilities, since you have that 
that many more rolls to work with as well. Let's talk items. The whole rationale behind this build is the idea that you always get rewarded for jumping around. Just to preface, items are something that are always changing in League. I already discussed the core behind this build being Essence Reaver and Prowler's Claw. As of right now, this is the core. But in case these items ever get changed drastically again, your overall mindset is going to be revolving around AD heavy items that both rely on the sheet mechanic and reward your consistent dashing. To elaborate on the core mentioned, I recommend Lucidity Boots just to access the ability haste. I think with this build, you actually have the leverage to go most other boots as well if you need it. So if you still like Berserker Greaves, I would say it's still pretty viable. Otherwise, even resistance boots can be good depending on the situation. For your third item and beyond, you basically continue to build items to synergize with the already very potent core. As of the time of this video, my favorite mythic is currently Duskblade, because it basically makes your playstyle have no counterplay when chaining kills off of each other. As Duskblade makes you untargetable for one second after a kill, it gives you just enough time for your tumble cooldown to reset afterwards, in which case you can then simply fade away into the darkness once more. Shojin is another funny item I like to get afterwards just to reduce your tumble cooldown. Since it's the most important ability in the build, being able to pick up 40 to 50 ability haste on it from just a single item is a pretty fat chunk. For your last item, just feel free to use your own judgment based on the conditions in the game. More often than not, you'll swing for a defensive item in order to increase survivability. Some games you can honestly ego it and go for Bloodthirster, since it'll also have a similar feel, but with a free 95 AD. Even classic MR items like Mahir could also work. Touching on matchups. For a champion that traditionally has a pretty bad matchup curve, this build certainly gives you more leverage to deal with that, but won't really make any miracles happen. This is mainly in thanks to the aforementioned rune page just simply carrying you through. Hail of Blades is just one of the strongest early game runes in the game because of the raw amount of stats it gives you, and allows you to proc silver bolts within your regular trade patterns with ease, making you drastically more relevant in these early phases. It also helps that your initial items present a much stronger mid-game spike, most notably Sheen into this case and Essence Reaver being just a big Sheen. This isn't a miracle worker however, so most lane bullies that you would expect to give Vayne a hard time in the early game will still do so. Feel free to slow your laning phase down in these cases and wait for your Essence Reaver spike in order to gain relevance once again. Team fighting is the part here where this build just becomes so incredibly fun. The ability to just bounce around, in and out of invisibility, and just chunk people for huge amounts of damage at a time just isn't something you'd like normally see out of an AD carry. Despite the different form it'll take, your overall job though is likely going to be similar to a standard Vayne build. Focus up on hitting whatever targets you can. Tumble Vayne has more viability to dive into the backline with the amount of stealth she has, but by no means would I consider it that much easier for her. The biggest thing is to continue to use your dashes to maneuver safely and dodge important abilities. The mindset is that you're bounced similarly to other champions around their mobility like Lucian or Ezreal. These these dashes are effectively what's going to increase your durability, so make sure you to not only use your rolls for extra damage, but to also increase your level of safety. So that's a new build. It's definitely unlike anything you've ever seen to come out of Vayne builds in the past, but it's a lovely experience once you get the hang of things. Feel free to let me know in the comments how you guys personally do with this build, I'd love to hear how it goes. Otherwise, that's it for me, and I'll catch you in the next one. Stay fresh.